Hey, I'm Nick. Today we've got the Sally Henson SH901 LED light. Uh, now this is not just any ordinary LED light, as you will soon see. And you might know by the Sally Henson name what this possibly is. It's a UV curing light. Ooh. So basically this is designed for curing nails. This would have originally come in a package that contains uh, several different types of nail polishes that are UV curing, as well as some nail polish remover, I do believe. Uh, and the entire point is apparently UV curing nails are better. They don't chip as easily or something like that. That's the idea. But also you can use uh, UV lights like this for for hydroponic purposes such as growing plants or for curing UV plastics and similar. These might have a slight antibacterial effect but realistically you need UVC a much stronger thing for doing uh, antibacterial stuff and this does not produce that strong or that uh, that specific frequency whichever direction UV is. The, the fun thing about UV is it uh, likes to fluoresce stuff and make whites show up so we can even see that there's some crud down in there so that's that's beautiful and lovely uh, UV is dangerous to avoid contact with your eyes and stuff let's try not to burn out the camera uh, th the main thing I liked about this one first off I picked it up because it's cheap and do a tear down but also to cure some plastics uh, because I personally don't use uh, nail polish I'm just not a, a big fan of the the look so uh, but also is because these look like fairly powerful LED chips in there I mean, we'll have to do a close-up. There's no way to get the camera angled that well. But you can see the chip and the bond wires. They're quite large. These even feel like the domes are, like, slightly rubberier than uh, normal domes that are hard plastics. So I don't know if that has to do with UV or what. But let's go ahead and do the teardown. Ah. They're using a three-lead flat flex to go to the power button slash light combo on the top. The top unit is just a button that they seem to, it's a rubber dome button, probably just a membrane on PCB, or maybe, sorry, just membrane on the flex. Uh, we can't really take the top out however it's sealed in there without like damaging it and I don't know if I'm maintaining this unit's integrity or not yet. Here we got the base. This is from 2012 so there's probably much better UV LEDs out by now. So maybe this isn't like the the, the best option. The cool thing about taking it apart is you can clean it quite well. Mm. We can see they do have quite a large heat sink for the LEDs, so they, they must sink quite a bit of power. There's these two retention clips holding it on. In the back of the plastic unit here, there's actually holes to allow for some convection and cooling of the heat sink. Otherwise it would be trapped in basically a thermally isolated plastic container here and the heat wouldn't sink out very well. We can see this is actually probably what's the same technique still used. We've got the what looks like 3 watt style, maybe 1 to 3 watt probably, uh, style LEDs and they're on a aluminum backed PCB. So they, this is just a, a large unit that they then bent down. You can even see the stress on the upper layer here. You can see the stress from the, the bend. doesn't matter. You There's no tracks. You, you have no worry. And here's our two leads heading over. So this is 12 volts, so as expected they're running three of them in series and then the two sets of series are in parallel. So a 3 ohm resistors. You can actually, if we knew maybe just a hair more about these chips with their 4 volts, we could figure out uh, all of their power. What's really cool about the top of these dies for the LED is that they've got this weird like rainbow screen effect going on. There you go. You can see that strange rainbow diffusing pattern much more clearly. Four bond wires. It must be to handle the current. And the entire thing is driven by this small circuit board. Here we've got the entire driving circuit board. The back has absolutely no components on it. The front's just a connector, main chip, several different passives, oddly placed the zero ohms, some random and oddly placed zero ohm resistors for jumper options, 
You can see how that one's in a weird angle and so on. And then there's this must be our main driver chip. I would guess a MOSFET, but I will be corrected by that. Small, probably transistor drive the MOSFET or similar maybe. So this is our lead that goes out to the LEDs. We can see our flat flex connector to the button. There is pads here for something. Down here is our main processor that does everything. You can see they actually have footprints for two different options. So they can either pick the small tiny package or they can pick this larger package for, I don't know if there's maybe a more industrial sized one or more advanced features, but that's that. And it's just run by a few little passives right by it. Here at the power supply, they actually spent the buck or two to have it branded in their name, but it is produced by, but it's produced by Jero WNT. We can see right on the inside of the PCB, WNT Electronics Co. And they even give you their web address. Isn't that fancy? Just in case we open this up. Quite interestingly is that they like doubled up on protection here. Because apparently one is not enough. And they siliconed it to the wall. Yeah, they siliconed it and shoved it in here and it got stuck to the wall, or they siliconed it to the wall anyway. So there's gooey junk at the bottom of this for some reason. Uh, the power supply, it's uh, off the shelf switch mode power supply with the red LED. Don't know what to say about it. It's got a chip. Discrete diode bridge rectifier. Input caps are... The input caps are Gather brand, I think that is, Gather. And they are 400 volt rated. Does this claim it's multi-voltage? Uh, yes, it is. So that's all good there. The output caps are 16 volt JL, 16 volt for both of them. Anyway, two filters across the wonderful little transformer here. Everything is kind of tacked down. The useless little spindly wires on the power supply. Uh, reasonable quality. I feel like that's going to snap off because I've messed with it a bit. The back's just, I don't know, I'm, I just like clean boards, but it's a bit dirty. It's just kind of crust everywhere. You've got just one slot cut for this tiny section here. I think this is all of your isolation barrier along here. There's your fuse resistor and heat shrink as usual, so there is a form of fuse. Let's go directly across with it, so that's good. Got all snap back together. Let's see if it explodes when I plug it in. Oops, blinder camera. That's some light energy. I can feel that heat. Getting a sun suntan right here. Yeah. All right, power supply didn't seem to explode, although it's not really structurally sound anymore. Glue. So much glue. Well, time to clean these lovely plastic parts that are covered in nail. Thanks for watching and subscribe for more tie downs. See ya!